Everyone has nightmares. But for actors, they can take a very different form because their worst nightmares happen when they are wide awake. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luann Moldovan, and welcome to The Actor's Nightmare. We have a great story today, but before we get into it, I want to thank our sponsors who have been so supportive of the show. First, a big shout out to Artists Repertory Theatre, Portland's premier regional theatre company, producing intimate, provocative shows that provide a home for a diverse community of artists where they can thrive and take risks. Check out their 2019 2020 season at www.artistsrep.org. Also, thanks so much to our patrons, Bob Conklin, and to Len and Susan Magazine and their company, Real Estates, providing statistical overviews for residential real estate in Oregon and Washington. Check them out at www.realestats.net. And of course, we are so grateful for the studio at North Rim, where we record our podcast. If you want to do a show, check them out at studioatnorthrim.com. All right, so today we have in the studio David Myers. Hi, Luann. You were um, in San Diego for some time performing at the Globe and other uh, other theaters there too, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, initially, though, the, the uh, when I uh, came out of performing arts school, the Globe was the only game in town. Oh, okay. And it was kind of a natural path uh, from that school to start apprenticing at the Old Globe, okay. which is what I did. And it was, it was a wonderful experience. And... Uh, I actually got my professional status working at the Globe wow. in a play that was extremely powerful at the time mm -hmm. uh, called Godspell, of which course. I think people know pretty well. Yes. Uh, well, I played uh, the Judas, John the Baptist wow. role. Okay. And I told the fellow who was playing Jesus that, uh, Larry, you know, you playing Jesus, I don't have to work for the crucifixion. It just comes naturally. <laughs> 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 but we had, it was a very demanding show. It was one of those things, there was an ensemble of eight people, mm -hmm. and everybody is on stage all the time. Mm -hmm. There's no time to leave, and one number and one scene folds into the next, and it moved beautifully. It was a very, very uh, uh, professionally mounted show. And David... You were singing too. I mean, did you did you discover that or something? You just knew you had that talent when you were in college. Well, when I was uh, at the School of Performing Arts, I was a musical theater major. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, admittedly, okay. though, the reason I became a musical theater major was I got more bang for my buck. I got more classes for the same amount of tuition, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I still got the same acting courses of a straight acting major. Ah. Okay. And I found myself sort of gravitating towards musicals because I can sing and I had uh, I had a, a proclivity for it. Great. And so when I was casting Godspell, mm -hmm. wow, I was I was absolutely thrilled. And uh, the wonderful thing about Godspell is it's a play where uh, every individual who does the play, anytime it's done, is bringing their own bag of shticks. <laughs> To the play, so so you you create comedic scenes out of the parables, and uh, a lot of it can be very very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Well, there was one point uh, in the show where I'm sitting on a sawhorse and I start to take the Lord's name in vain. Oh Jesus! And before I can finish it, this this girl playing one of the roles swings around and cups my hand with my mouth with her hand to stop me from speaking. Hmm. Okay. So that I don't take the Lord's name okay. in vain. Okay, okay. Right after that sequence, uh, Jesus and I have the soft shoe, all for the best. Okay. And, of course, you can't leave the stage. So I sit down on the sawhorse. I say, oh, Jesus. Well, the gal who was playing that role is now actually a very well-known musical theater actress in New York, Susan Mosier. Oh, sure. And she was quite young at the time, so was I. <laughs> and she turned around. She was very... Very strong okay. girl. She swung around and she punched me in the nose with the heel of her hand oh. so hard, oh. she knocked me backwards off the sawhorse. Oh, my God. Well, while I'm on the ground, I realized my nose had started to bleed. Oh, God. And so I couldn't think of what else to do because I couldn't leave the stage. I didn't want to sit up with the nose bleeding. Yeah. And I knew I had a number to sing right oh, afterwards. Geez. So I was wearing a scarf. I ripped off the end of the scarf, and I shoved it up my nose like a plug. Oh. 
<laughs> not realizing, of course, that I had flared my nostril out to about a half a foot <laughs> in oh, diameter. Oh, God. <laughs> and my face was already covered with blood. Oh. So I popped back up, <laughs> 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 looking like a clown from hell. Oh, God. And, you know, the, all of a sudden, the audience from a smile went to, uh, you know, a slack-jawed Paul. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't believe what they were watching. And then Jesus and I started into this number where it's this light, little, soft shoe, you know. <laughs> Some men are born to live at ease, doing what they please, living at ease, and then honey. And we were doing this in, a, in an arena of about 245 seats, which oh is only gosh. like four rows on each side. So we were very close to yeah. the audience, which was lovely under most circumstances. <laughs> As we're going up the aisle, I can see the horror <laughs> on people's face. As as I'm trying to smile and sell this song, <laughs> and they're just like, oh, they're just like Don't dying. Don't get close to me. <laughs> I was actually on another point in that run. We had been doing it for so long, you know, and I always show up early, you know, oh, yeah. two hours early to prepare. Yeah. There wasn't much makeup. We painted our faces like clowns a little bit, and yeah. that was it. But I was showing up uh, to do an afternoon matinee, and I, I just I did, didn't have a spring in my step that day. It didn't really, you know, <laughs> excite me to be going in. I'm going, oh, another show. Yeah. Well, as I'm walking towards the stage entrance, one of the electricians, who was a long-haired, full-bearded hippie, uh, I hear this voice going, David, <laughs> David. And I don't know where the voice is coming from. Oh, Dale. Dale, is that you? Yeah, yeah, David, come here. So I went over there, and he's smoking a joint. Okay. Now, I had never gotten stoned for performance, and I had no intention of getting stoned for, for, for a performance at the time. Okay. But he said, you want a hit? And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, it's two hours till, the, you know, the show. <laughs> you know, if I take, you know, a hit or two, maybe that'll put me in the mood. There you go. <laughs> What I didn't know is that hit or two was of a joint that was probably laced with something oh, God. awful. <laughs> I went into the dressing room and I sat in front of the mirror looking at myself for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of which, I didn't know my name. <laughs> And I had a show. I'm going, oh, okay, Myers, okay, okay. Whew. You got to pull yourself together here. You got to pull yourself together. And, you know, it, it, it gets time, you know, the rest of the cast goes on stage. And, and they don't know? This. No, they don't know. Okay. Nobody has any idea. Okay. Of course, I'm not advertising no. the fact that I, my, I'm half brain dead. Just you and Dale are the only ones. Oh, Dale. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Uh, and uh, there's this number at the very, very beginning of the show where most of the company is doing this, uh, this number where they're famous philosophers over time, Socrates, Nietzsche, this and that, and it's lovely. At the end of which, the John the Baptist character, me, yes. steps through the curtains with a shofar, the ram's horn, okay. and blows the ram's horn and begins, prepare ye the way of the Lord, you know, okay. all of this. And it's a beautiful moment. Yeah. Of course, I have to have all of my props with me to do that number, including a baptismal bucket and a sponge and a squirt gun and, you know, all the yeah. silly <laughs> things that we did with baptizing. Right. And I'm waiting for my cue. You haven't been on stage yet. I haven't been on stage. Okay. I'm behind the curtain, and I realize I haven't got anything okay. with me. I Did haven't you? got the shofar. <laughs> I haven't got the button. I went, oh, God, holy shit. So now to get to this entrance, you had to go all the way around the building. This was an arena oh with four God. stairs going up the corners, the bombs. <laughs> oh. And the one I was entering in was the farthest from the dressing room, and you had to go around the building to oh, get there. God. So I went around the building, ran to the dressing room, grabbed the stuff, ran back to the entrance where they were hitting my key, my, my tone, oh. for the third time oh, my for me to step through and start preparing ye. Oh. So I burst through the curtain, <laughs> and I try and blow the shofar. <laughs> I don't have the breath. I'm completely out of breath. <laughs> I finally go, oh, so to hell with it. So I, so I go to start preparing ye. Prepare ye the way of the... Well, 
everybody down on the stage amongst the rest of the cast was looking at me like they saw their life flashing before their eyes. They had no idea what was going on with me. It was the most embarrassing thing. All I can say is thank God for them because they didn't know what was wrong, but they realized I was in some serious trouble. Oh, my God. And they helped me get through the first act, Oh. after which I swore my contrition, but... But, oh, I, 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 I got to that same soft shoe yeah. number, you know. Yeah. And I had been doing it for a year. Yeah. I forgot the lyrics. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Some men are born to live at ease, doing with the bees. Da, 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 no. da, da. Oh, I have never been so mortified oh, in my life. Oh, David. Oh, it taught me never do drugs, especially if you're going to be doing a show. <laughs> you and Nancy Reagan. I'm telling you, I had no idea that I was doing anything like that. Oh, I God thought I was taking David. a couple of hits off a joint. I am delighted to hear a, another of your tales. This one has to do with the production of Sidemen at Artist Repertory Theater. And that's right. So that's tell right. us about this and who you played. Uh, Sidemen was a wonderful play um, that follows a group of uh, musicians and their family mm -hmm. uh, th across several decades as being told by the son of one of the musicians. Okay. And it's just really a remarkable play. Uh, so, you know, you start off in like 1973 and then you go back to 1953. Right. And then you go to 1967. Mm -hmm. And then you go to 1986. And, you know, for some reason, in the course of rehearsals, and uh, myself and others had all been vocal about the fact that uh, we hadn't really received any costumes that were period appropriate mm. for all of this stuff. And then we heard back that, well, the director wants to do this all-in-one costume. And we said, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, how are you going to do it in one? Not only are they different periods, yeah. we're different ages. Yes. You know, we don't wear the same suit, and the one that they had provided was a shark skin suit, which wasn't right for any of the oh, periods. <laughs> <laughs> and you're playing, I saw this, you're playing one of the I was, musicians. I was playing Al, who starts off as lover boy, you know, uh, and uh, ends up after having a stroke years later that can't play the horn anymore, mm, you know, can't okay. even speak hardly, but mm -hmm. he can play the drums with one hand, you know, okay. kind of pathetic. And I loved doing that part, but I was very concerned about the idea of not having costumes right. to support the storytelling. Okay. And the day of opening, they authorized the customer to take us shopping. The day of opening. The wow. day of okay. opening. So finally, we went and got costumes that were period appropriate. Okay. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, uh, nothing had been tried on before and nothing had been worked in. Oh, God. Uh, and uh, most especially the shoes mm. that I was wearing had not been, as we call, distressed. Mm. In other words, they were slick leather soles and hadn't been worn on the street or anything yet. So, mm. you know, you put slippery surface on a slippery surface and you're going to slip. <laughs> they had built this beautiful set uh, with the centerpiece being a musical clef note in the shape of a platform that yeah. was raised up several feet from floor level. And on this uh, piece, one of the scenes played out in the home of one of the musicians where they're all smoking pot and they're having a lot of fun messing around. And at one point, Al, my character, has the joint, and I go running down the platform, you know, after one of the jokes that we play on Terry, the wife of one of the musicians. And, you know, it's all very cute. Well, I grab the joint, I go running upstage on the cleft note, and I can't stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I slid, and I slid, and then I slid off the edge of the platform and ended butt first in the lap of one of the patrons in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> who then proceeded to grab me by the ass <laughs> and push me on sta stage like I was a trailblazer who went out, uh, out of bounds, you know, pushed me back on stage. And Duffy Epstein, who was yes. playing one of the other characters, improvises, goes, all right, Al, give me the joint. You've had enough. <laughs> Well, everybody knew it was a mistake, and, oh. you know, uh, we had to wait until everybody on stage and off stage stopped laughing. 
<laughs> is that right? <laughs> oh, it was, and it was hilarious. <laughs> yes. But, you know, it's like, what do you say? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How terrifying in the moment, though. You had no control. No control. I go, okay, opening night, great. Here I go. <laughs> 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 and thank you for that shove back up. <laughs> yes. Oh, who? Thank you. Uh, here's my number. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, that's priceless. Yeah. Uh, it, but there, there, your shoes became distressed. And <laughs> the, the shoes were not nearly as distressed as the actor on that night. <laughs> Shay, <laughs> thanks, David, for coming back and, and sharing that. Thanks for having me, Luann. Oh, hilarious story. Thanks so much for tuning into The Actor's Nightmare. We hope you enjoy listening to the podcast as much as we do producing it. And remember to subscribe to the Actor's Nightmare podcast. You can go to our website at www.actorsnightmarepodcast.com, choose subscribe, and then choose the platform that you like to use to listen to podcasts. Please subscribe and support the show by liking us on Facebook. And again, I want to thank our sponsors, Artist Repertory Theatre, Portland's premier regional theater company, producing intimate, provocative shows that provide a home for a diverse community of artists where they can thrive and take risks. And to Bob Conklin, an ardent sponsor of all things theatrical here in Portland. And finally, to Real Estats, providing statistical overviews for residential real estate in Oregon and Washington. This is Luann Moldovan. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on The Actor's Nightmare. <laughs>